Here we are in a early JK, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I think it's a nine. And it has a L86 LT Gen 5 6.2 engine in it. And I just took it on the trail for the first time. This Jeep has been on the trail many times before, but it's the first time I've had it on the trail. And I'll give you my impressions of what I think about the Gen 5 motors. The Gen 5 motors have direct injection, continuous variable valve timing, and air fuel management. Direct injection puts the fuel right into the chamber through high compression or through high pressure, 2,000 pounds plus. This allows more efficient combustion efficiency and it also allows the use with properly designed combustion chambers to use regular gas and high compression engines. So this engine is over 11 to 1 but can run regular gas. Now I think the most equivalent Gen 4 engine to this Gen 5 engine would be the LS3. They're both rated at about 430 horsepower. Here's the difference. This Gen 5 engine has a lot more torque in the mid-range. Because of the cam phasing being variable, which means it can bring the power band to the RPM instead of the RPM to the power band, it allows a lot more tor torque under the curve. And it's readily apparent when you drive it. Just a little throttle and even this 6,000 pound JK with 40s jumps. Peak horsepower I think is about the same, but because of this mid-range torque, this engine will probably take a stock LS3. If the LS3 was tuned a little, I think it'd be a pretty good match. This engine doesn't rev as high as the LS3. You don't want to rev an AFM engine high. It doesn't need to because it puts its power out in the mid-range and on the bottom. I'm not sure how much good AFM does on a heavy JK. On a light JK, I think this, this L86 with AFM will get better mileage than an equivalent LS3 or L94, which is the 6.2 truck engine Gen 4. But with a heavy JK, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. So the bottom line is I, I think these Gen 5 engines have essentially made the engines feel larger and what I mean by that is having the higher compression higher cylinder pressure and the cam phasing this 6.2 feels more like a 7 liter engine it doesn't rev as high as an LS3 but it's got more torque like a 454 our hopes with the 5.3 L83 Gen 5 engine is it will perform similar to the Gen 4 6.0 LS which has a lot of torque about 370 horsepower if it does that's going to make the gen 5 5.3 very desirable in a JK because you'll have the smaller displacement for better economy the engines cost a lot less than the 6.2s they're all aluminum unlike the 6.0 truck motor from the gen 4 and the LMG's 5.3s I think they're rated at about 330 horsepower, but more importantly, if they have that mid-range torque to move the weight of a JK, it's going to make a low-priced, economical engine for a JK that's going to alleviate the need to step up to a 6.2. Now, the 6.0 Gen 4 engine is still one of my favorite engines, and I even like the 5.3s if you match it to the JK. But I think if the Gen 5 5.3 pans out to perform similar to a 6.0, in the next couple of years we're going to be doing a lot of 5.3 Gen 5 swaps. We have done about six of these. This is a six speed with Atlas 2, and the Atlas 2 works great. We've got a adapter that we work with Advance on to make the 8L90, 8L80 to the Gen 5 uh, or to the uh, 241J and the Atlas 2. The 
8L80, 8L90 has a wet transfer case adapter similar to the Allison. So we must run the GM adapter with a basically a clocking ring. Now, we are shipping some of these kits in beta, but we're mostly doing these in-house. And I would say by mid-2017, we'll be supporting a full Gen 5 kit. Some of the challenges we have are cruise control, brake pedal position sensors. Most of you know we do not like to work around factory redundancies, safety mechanisms. This Jeep right here has been through four dice and it still it drives awesome. We're still doing some fine tuning on the Gen 5. Mainly, mainly regarding the cruise control brake pedal position sensor inputs. We've actually got CAN interface now with the brake pedal monitoring. So we have some options there, both on the Jeep side and on the GM side. But what we don't want to do is eliminate the, the, uh, the factory built-in systems. So we're working on the cruise control and how to most efficiently put a brake pedal position sensor in these. One will have to be fitted because the JK is equipped with a brake pedal switch, which is discrete on off, zero to 12, 12 to zero volts. The GM uses twin synchronized opposing brake pedal sensors. And what that means is it's zero to five, five to zero volts. And it uses these inputs not only for tail lights and torque converter clutch operation, but it actually uses it for torque management. So if you're going down a hill and you're riding the brakes, it's going to apply some more compression braking. If you're at a stop and you're on the brake hard, it's going to know it and it's going to reduce torque to protect your axles and other driveline components. So can we eliminate the VPPS? Yes, we can. But will we? No. So we need to come up with an easy, efficient way to install one in a JK. The end result is going to be essentially a modern Generation 5 LT fully functional monitored engine in your JK. And I'm not sure that the Gen 5s have a significant advantage over the Gen 4s. In fact, I'm going to say that at this point, I don't think they do. I think they do have an advantage, mainly the ability to run regular gas, additional torque in the mid-range, and and I feel that the Gen 4 engines are, are still very viable because this was an incremental improvement. This was not revolutionary, it was evolutionary, just like when they went from the Gen 3 to the Gen 4. When they went from the small block to the Gen 3, that was revolutionary. So the gains just aren't as much, and the 8-speed transmission, I will be driving one here very shortly, may even increase the gains a little bit, but we're talking single-digit percent. Uh, we're not going to be seeing huge improvements, in my opinion, at this point. So the Gen 4 engines are still very viable. There are some peculiarities to the Gen 5 that I've noticed. It starts almost like a diesel with a high compression and the internal fuel pump it must build up pressure so when you crank it it cranks over several revolutions to build up that fuel pressure the feeder pump needs to prime the mechanical pump which then needs to build up over 2,000 psi of pressure and then it supplies it to the engine and the engine starts so it, it, it starts almost like a diesel truck and you'll notice on cold days especially if your Jeep's been sitting for a while it's going to crank over five, six, seven, eight times before it gets that pressure up and starts. Uh, so if you are familiar with how a diesel starts, you're going to understand how this Gen 5 starts. The sounds are different. Having the extra torque in the mid-range and that cam phasing, you can almost hear it in the intake. You can hear an air whooshing noise. We have more cylinder pressure. Um, we're handling the primary air differently. Primary air is air that goes through the intake. And also the exhaust. You can hear the exhaust note is different than the Gen 4s. Now just cruising on the highway right here, I don't hear the engine at all. All I hear is the tires and the wind. So there's definitely some improvement in the Gen 5s. 
I, I don't feel that you should hold out for a Gen 5 motor at this point unless you have a need for it, like emissions, or you have the desire to get the latest and greatest hardware and software. Because I think if you got a Gen 4 engine, a 6.0, a 6.2 LS3, you're going to be extremely happy like most of our other customers are. And the simplicity and the fact that the Gen 4s have been out for 10 years means the market is rationalized, the aftermarket supports it, the parts distribution is, is in place. It's going to be a while before the Gen 5 engines reach that. Now, the potential of the Gen 5 engine is interesting because with this high compression and direct injection, when the aftermarket does figure it out, there may be some significant gains. I've been hearing GM is holding back on these engines. I hear these engines can put out significantly more torque and power.